Former spina bifida, never able to walk, Aaron Wheels Fotheringham can do something even better than that. He can fly. At 23, he's a pioneer in the burgeoning sport of WCMX, wheelchair motocross. He's among the world's first extreme wheelchair athletes. Back in 2006, Wheels, as he's affectionately called by friends and competitors alike, landed the first wheelchair backflip and has since pushed himself and his aerodynamic chair to do even more. Wondering how he does it? Just take a look. Aaron is adamant that he rides on his wheelchair versus in it and says it's because of his wheelchair, not in spite of it, that he's been able to travel the world and realize his dreams. He hopes to encourage others to look past their limitations and to pursue their dreams in their own unique way. We want to welcome to Full Frame Wheels. Thanks so much for coming in. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, remarkable. I, I watched some of your video and I had to watch it like this. Uh, do, you, do you ever get scared? Oh, constantly. Yeah. I'm just, you know, pretty much always scared, but I guess that's what makes it fun. And you started a really young age doing this, huh? Yeah, I, my older brother was riding bikes and skateboards and I was eight years old and that's when I started thinking I should try it too, you know? You uh, seem very able at this, so I know that you don't like the term disabled. Uh, in fact, it doesn't seem to fit you in any <laughs> respect. So talk to me about why you don't like that word. Well, I don't like the word disabled unless I'm trying to get something, you know? <laughs> um, but no, just in general, it's just like, you know, when I think of disabled, I think of like a car that just completely doesn't run. Um, you know, just like the engines stopped, but I'm, you know, I'm perfectly able to do anything, you know, anyone can do except walking upstairs is a pain. Um, but I mean, I can jump down them and it's just kind of, I think you're only as disabled as you feel. And I never wake up in the morning and think, oh man, I'm disabled. Yeah. Well, it's funny you bring up the car analogy because uh, I've heard you talk about your parents that y you really respect and admire them for adopting you because it was like buying a car with a lot of bad parts. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about that. Uh, why do you feel that way? Oh, my parents are awesome, and uh, it's just you know I'm I'm super grateful for the for the fact that they adopted me, and I was just blessed to end up in a home with an older brother who was into extreme sports and you know parents that would allow me to you know participate on my wheelchair and um, you know just a mixture of all these different blessings have really helped me get to where I am. Doctors uh, growing up uh, were always delivering bad news uh, to you and I mean you went through multiple surgeries and um, constantly told all the things you couldn't do. Do you think that's part of what inspired you to do the things that you do? For sure, you know, um, growing up, when my parents told me, you know, they told me what the doctors would say, and doctors a lot of times will say the worst case scenario just to scare you, or uh, and my doctor said that I wasn't gonna be able to sit up on my own or be able to do anything, and I think just from a young age that always was in the back of my mind like, okay, I gotta prove that I can do more than that, and uh, you know, it was always fun going into the doctor offices and be like, look what I just did, <laughs> you know, and show them a video of me doing a backflip or something, you know. <laughs> it was always fun and, you know, the doctors were always pretty cool. You mentioned the word on. Uh, you prefer on over in, and, and words do matter. So talk to us about that. Why is that important? Why that distinction? just kind of hit me one day because people are always like, what's it like being confined to a wheelchair or you know, what's it like being in a wheelchair? And to me, I'm like, well, I'm not confined to it. Like confined reminds me of like a prison or something. And this, you know, is far from a prison. It's, you know, it's just a, a blessing. I know I've said it, but I feel like the, the wheelchair is an awesome thing. And I look at it like I'm riding on a bike or on a skateboard. You know, you never hear bikers say that they're riding in their bike, you know? So I'm just riding on it and it's, just a tool that's helping me, you know, succeed with stuff. So, uh, can't help but notice the t-shirt you're wearing, uh, which really is kind of <laughs> emblematic of some of the things that you can do with your wheelchair that uh, most other people cannot. Um, starting out and saying, you know, I'm going to be an extreme athlete in a wheelchair, I'm sure some people are like, what? But you're able to do exactly what's on your t-shirt. Uh, talk to me about 
becoming a, an extreme athlete, and then also being a role model to other young kids. Because I've seen videos where you know you're kind of mentoring young kids who kind of want to follow in your footsteps. Well, one of my dreams when I was a little kid was to be like an extreme professional athlete. I just loved watching Tony Hawk and Chad Kage and all the pro BMXers, and I thought, oh, I want to, I want to do that. I want to be a professional extreme athlete, but. I have issues walking, which then makes skateboarding and BMX kind of out of the question. But I mean, enough positive energy and you know wishful thinking towards it, and it it ended up happening a little different than I thought. I didn't, I never pictured I'd be doing backflips on my wheelchair, but uh, it's a lot of fun, and you know, for me to be able to travel around and be able to show kids on chairs and adults on chairs that they can have fun with it is just a, you know, an even more of a bonus. Uh, I really enjoy going and doing motivational speaking too uh, and just going places and showing people that, you know, life gave you this wheelchair and you can be bummed on it or you can, you know, look at it for what it is and it's a great opportunity and it's fun to show kids and see, you know, some kids will come to the clinics or the camps and be kind of quiet or bummed out on the chair and then by the end you know you'll hear them say that they love being on a wheelchair and I get a lot of able body you know some of my supporters like fans and stuff they come up to me and they're like man I wish I was on a wheelchair <laughs> and I'm, that's you know that's what the goal is it's such a good feeling to be able to help impact them in a positive way and show them. Okay, you used the word impact twice in that response, and so that leads right to our clip, which is very impactful because <laughs> it shows your impact over and over before you finally hit it. So let's watch this, and then I want you to uh, talk to us about it afterwards. So let's yeah. take a look at this clip. Remarkable. I'm going to get a double flip tonight. Oh! I hit my head. Are you good? Really hard. I pulled too hard. Again! Good job, buddy. You okay? Okay, I've seen that clip like at least three times now. Each time I'm like, Ugh, and I think I need to take an Advil because I heard just watching you. But I almost cry every time at the end. And I don't think it's because of your reaction, which is pretty phenomenal, but just everybody coming in and flooding you. And I think, God, he probably really hurt himself. But now he's really hurt because everybody's hugging you so hard. Talk to me about that experience and the determination that you demonstrate in this. Man, that was the, the best night of my life. Uh, I get emotional every time I watch it just because... Like, I was working on that trick for like a year, like straight, just, I probably got over 20 concussions trying this Jeez. stupid trick. And um, finally, like, when I was, that night I landed it, I went for it and I broke my chair. And just after all the crashing and all the pain, I was like, I was so frustrated and I went down to go fix my chair and everyone's still up at the ramp. And I'm, I'm in my little lodge room, and I just laid on the floor, and for a second I gave up. I was just like, I'm over it. Like, if I fix my chair, what are the odds that I'm going to be able to go land it? I've been working on this for a year, so many injuries, and I'm just, I'm just going to lay here. And I, after a couple seconds, I was like, well, that's pathetic. So I sat up, and I, I fixed my chair, and I just kind of pushed back up to the ramp. And um, then a couple tries later, I ended up landing the double backflip. And that was, I got emotional. I, I may have cried a little bit, just a little bit, um, after I landed that because I was, I was just so, you know, it really showed me that 
I almost gave up on one of my dreams, but I just stuck with it through all the negative and all the hard, you know, trials in it, and I ended up landing it. So that was that was, you know, the most important trick I've ever landed. Now you've uh, you've traveled extensively because of this. I mean, <laughs> you've you've said it. You know, you've met some incredible people. You've been to some incredible places, largely because of this wheelchair and what you're able to do with it. Um, including China. So talk to me about that experience. I don't suspect you know much Mandarin. Uh, what was it like and, and can you break through the communication barriers just with this? Mm -hmm. Well, um, China was awesome. You know, I was there for, I think I was there for like a week and we toured around to different schools and I was speaking and a lot of the kids actually knew pretty good English which saved me a lot. Um, but we did have some translators and stuff, and it was just cool to be able to share my message with them because over there it was, you know, when you see the wheelchair, it's kind of not as mainstream. Like, it's just kind of not as common, I feel like. And to be able to show people that, hey, if you do see someone on a wheelchair, they're capable of all this stuff. Like, there's no reason to look at them as any different, you know? We're going to have uh, our guys uh, come on out now and move the table because you've said you'll do a, a little bit of your tricks for us, and we're excited to see them. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and so uh, give us an idea of, of what I know you don't have a lot of room to work with here. This is not like your usual uh, playground, so to speak, but give us an idea of what we're going to watch. Let's see. Don't judge me. It's carpet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, wait. That wasn't good. I can do better. I want to rebate. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah. It's... Arms. These arms. I mean, you could probably lift a truck, huh? Jeez. <laughs> nah. How uh, tough is that to do that sort of thing, though? That's um, not easy. And you just kind of build the muscle just from, I mean, I go to the skate park almost every day, and just from doing that, it really helps build it up. So what's your next adventure? Are, are, do you spend a lot of time with like more mind-boggling stunts? Do your parents say, knock it off, don't do that? Because I would, if I was your parent, I'd be like, oh my God. Well, I'm old enough to sign my own waivers now, so they have no say. But um, That's comforting. <laughs> you know, it's pretty cool. I get to go to, I think next week I'm going to Dubai, and I get to do a backflip for the prince and hopefully wow. land it. So. Wow, wow. I mean, are there days where you just pinch yourself and say, I can't believe what's going on? Yeah, um, you know, or sometimes you hit your head and you don't need to pinch yourself. <laughs> that wakes you up. Well, I'm going to ask you not to do more of that. I, I think you're uh, amazing wheels. Thanks so much for coming in and talking to us. Uh, impressive. While we go to the break, if you want to do a little something, go right ahead and I'll talk. We Ooh. can both be doing something at the same time. That sound fair to Sounds you? Sounds good. All right. We'll be back in a moment with another inspirational story of a life lived beyond limits.